Hello there, and uh, welcome, sports fans, to another episode of 162 Times, your daily baseball recap and preview show. This is going to be episode 98. I'm your host, Daniel Turner. Um, very pleased that we've made it all the way to the All-Star break. So, not tonight, but tomorrow night uh, in Arlington, Texas at Globe Life Field. It'll be the American League All-Stars versus the National League All-Stars in a silly game that means nothing. It may decide home field advantage in the World Series, or they may have gotten rid of that, because for a time, baseball thought it would be a good idea to give a massive advantage to one league or the other based on this preposterous midseason affair. Um, but this particular radio host, Daniel Turner, does not enjoy All-Star games. I think they're dumb. When I was a little kid, I got really excited about them, but as I've gotten older, I just I find that they're a waste of time. And the last couple of years, Julio Rodriguez, Mariners, you know, young stud, has been in the home run derby. And because he's had a much better first half season, and last year the game was in Seattle, so obviously they wanted to have some local stars be front and center. I felt like it completely hurt his second half start to the season because how many times he had to try and like make a ridiculous swing in a short amount of time. It can't have been good for his body. Anyhow, we don't have to worry about any of that this year because Seattle had a division-leading team, but very few All-Stars. It's kind of odd. I think Cal Raleigh should have been an All-Star with his numbers, especially the numbers he put up right at the end of the All-Star game. But anyway, those are just some thoughts. It's, it was boiling hot and humid today in Ottawa, and then it just thunderstormed. And so I was supposed to play a doubleheader in softball tonight, but it got rained out, which sucks. So I'm going to meander through this episode because I've got time. And uh, just to break it down for you, we'll, we'll do our usual thing. We, we do have a Mariners game to talk about uh, that happened on Sunday. It was a chance for them to split a four-game series 2-2 two to two with the Los Angeles Angels. We don't have anything to preview. The last time the Mariners traveled to Los Angeles in the American League to Anaheim, we did our thing about, you know, where the Angels have played over the years. And it's always been Angel Stadium, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure we did this. It might be like a Mandela effect in my brain, but I am almost certain the Mariners have played the Angels on the road already this year, and that we did that. And the only cool thing I have to say about the Angels is when they came into existence, they were called the California Angels, which is a really cool name. And then they ruined that by becoming the Anaheim Angels and the LA Angels and preposterously the Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim for a time. The Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim. To copy the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim or something? I don't even know. Ridiculous. Still can't believe Vladimir Guerrero went into the Hall of Fame wearing an Angels hat. Should have been an Expos hat. Anyhow, maybe I'm salty because the Mariners lost by one run to the Angels on Sunday. 3-2, your final score. Which... Brings the Mariners to a 52-46 and 46 record, still first place in the American League West, heading into the All-Star break. The Angels, 41-55, and 55, fourth in the American League West. Win went again to reliever Hans Kraus, 3-0, 3-0 rather, .71 ERA. The loss, again, went to reliever Austin Voth, 2-4 now, 3.69 ERA. And the save went to Contreras, his first of the year, 4.66 ERA. Mariners had four hits for two runs. Angels had three hits for three runs. And they also committed two errors. <sighs> All-star performance from Mariners starting pitcher Logan Gilbert. He went seven full innings, two hits, no runs, no walks, nine strikeouts, 2.79 ERA on the season going into the break, 87 pitches. I mean, he's a god. Fulmer, for the Angels, started the game four and two-thirds. No hits, no runs, no earned runs, one walk, seven Ks. Jeez Louise. Ryan Stenick came in, didn't get an out, gave up a run, which was earned, and a walk. Angels used Strickland, an inning and two-thirds, gave up two hits, one run, two strikeouts, and a homer. 
Then the Angels used Moore. An inning, one hit, one run, one walk, three Ks. The same time, later, rather, the Mariners used Voth. He got a third of an inning done, one hit, two runs, two earned. They came off a home run. He also walked a guy and gave up a strike uh, and struck out a man. And then Saucedo closed things down, two-thirds of an inning, one strikeout. Uh, For the Angels, it was Kraus who gave up a hit, a walk, and he struck out two. And then Contreras, who just struck out one. Angels struck out the Mariners 15 times before the All-Star break. Mariners struck out the Angels 11 times. Mariners left eight on base. Angels only left two on base. Unbelievable. Uh, We got a couple stolen bases from Robles and Moore. Scoring one is followed. Crawford home run, top six, one nothing Seattle solo shot. Then top seven, Victor Robles steals third base and scored on a throwing error by the catcher Logan Ohape. Great work, Victor. Two nothing. But bottom of eight, Joe Adele on the guy that Ryan Stanek walked. Hit a three run shot. Uh, Mickey Moniak and Zach Neto scoring. That was your ball game. Unbelievable. The only saving grace in all of this is that despite their best efforts, the Mariners still hold the division lead because the Rangers beat the Astros 4-2, to two, doing them a favor. Elsewhere around the majors in terms of scoring, the Rays beat the Guardians 2 nothing. The Red Sox beat the Royals 5-4. The Orioles beat the Yankees 6-5. The Athletics beat the Phillies 18-3. The Tigers beat the Dodgers 4-3. The Marlins beat the Reds 3-2. The Twins beat lost to the Giants 3-2. The Cubs beat the Cardinals 8-3. The Brewers beat the Nationals 9-3. The Pirates beat the White Sox 9-4. The Blue Jays beat the D-backs 8-7. And the Braves beat the Padres 6-3. So, now what we'll do is we'll shift into Sunday on a Monday recap time, and we'll put the standings where they're at, where they need to be, before the All-Star break. And we may do a show during the All-Star break that sort of recaps where things stand vis-a-vis how I had picked things at the start of the year. Um, And that's also dependent on either me going back and listening to those episodes or finding the piece of paper that I wrote them down on. So don't hold your breath out there, listeners. But let's get to it. Let's start with the Hogs in the American League East. And I think this is the second time we've said this all year, but the Baltimore Orioles now lead this division. They are 58 and 38. They are one game up on the New York Yankees. They've lost seven of their last 10, the Orioles have, and they have a plus 80 run differential, but they're still first in the division. The Yanks are 58 and 40, one game back, 106 on the positive side of the run differential. The Boston Red Sox are making a charge. They're 53 and 42. They're only four and a half back of the Orioles. They're seven and three in their last 10, and they have a plus 44 run differential. Those teams are all in play. The Rays are at 500 at 48 and 48, minus 63 on the differential, and the Jays are 44 and 52. Hard to watch. They're nine and a half games back of the wild card. And they're 14 games out of the division. Their season's pretty much done. They're minus 66 on the differential. So we got to keep an eye on the Yankees and the Red Sox. Because if the Mariners were to fall out of a division lead, they would be behind both those teams in the wildcard standings. In the American League Central, it's still led by the Cleveland Guardians. They're 58-37, and 4-6 and six in their last 10, plus 85 on the differential. Hot on their heels are the Minnesota Twins. Four and a half games back, to be precise. 54 and 42. And they're plus 47 on the run differential. Kansas City Royals are 52 and 45. So they're two and a half back of the Twins, seven back of the Guardians. And they have a plus 60 run differential. We'll start talking about the wild card race after the All-Star break. But... Minnesota, Baltimore, and the Yankees are currently, uh, Minnesota, Boston, and the Yankees are currently in the wild card spots in the American League. All right, to the division that matters most to all of us, obviously, the wonderful American League West. Seattle leads 
with a 52 and 46 record. They're 5 and 5 in their last 10. They've lost 3 in a row to the Angels. They're plus 19 on the differential. They're 30 and 18 at home, 22 and 28 on the road, and 26 and 28 against teams that are better than 500. We're also going to expand the stats here for a second just to talk about Seattle because, you know, we like talking about Seattle on this show. So they have a great record against their division, 18 and 8, bad against the Central, 10 and 13, terrible against the East, 9 and 14. They have positive winning records against lefties and righties. They're 500 in day games, 6 above 500 in night games. They play really well on grass, not so well on AstroTurf, and they're 19 and 14 in one-run games and 6 and 5 in extra inning games. That's probably making all the difference this year. So when you lose three straight one-run games to the Angels, my ire gets raised. Okay, moving on. The Astros are in second place in the division, as we have discussed. They are one game back. Their record is 50 and 46. Same number of losses. They played two less games than the Mariners. They're plus 49 on the run differential. They're 6-4 and four in their last 10. Right behind them are the Texas Rangers, 46-50. and 50, Five games back of the Mariners, plus 9 on the differential. Then come the Angels, 41-55, and 55, and Oakland, 37-61. and 61. Both bad teams. All right. So, after the break, Houston comes to Seattle for a series. That'll be huge. Texas hosts Baltimore. That'll be big. The Royals have the White Sox. Good for them. The Twins have to host Milwaukee. Could be tough. The Guardians get San Diego. Hmm, interesting. The Yankees are hosting Tampa, and the Red Sox have to go to L.A. to play the Dodgers. That's tough. So the schedule is favorable to the Mariners the rest of the way, generally speaking, but they got to play well. They just played a terrible team, and they, play, and they lost three out of four. So I think the Mariners need... A little bit stiffer competition. Maybe they could just play the San Diego Padres for the rest of the season. That would be terrific. All right, moving over to the venerable National League. Phils lead the National League East. That's the Philadelphia Phillies for the uneducated. 62 and 34. They're the best team in baseball, but they're 5-5 five and five in their last 10, and their differential is plus 110. The Braves are 8.5 games back. Atlanta sits at 53 and 42, plus 65 on the differential. They're four games up in the National League wild card, so they're pretty safe for a playoff spot right now, the Braves are. Behind them are the New York Mets, three games above 500, 49 and 46, 12 and a half back of the Phillies, but in a wild card spot presently. They have a plus 13 differential. Then there's the Washington Nationals falling out of it, 44 and 53, and the Marlins, 33 and 63, and a minus 152 differential for the Marlins. They are a god-awful ball club. They're 29 games back of the Phillies at the break. In the NL Central, still led by the Milwaukee Brewers, 55 and 42. 3 and 7, however, in their last 10, plus 79 on the run differential. And the St. Louis Cardinals are only four and a half games back of them in the division, and they're 50 and 46, the Cardinals are, but still a minus 38 run differential, which is one of the worst in the National League outside of Miami and the Colorado Rockies. Interesting, right? They're in a playoff spot right now, half a game up in the wildcard race. The Pirates. Right behind them, led by all-star starter for the National League, Paul Skeens. He wasn't even in the league to start the season. That's how good this guy is. They're 48-48, and 48, six and a half back in the division, one and a half back in the wild card, seven and three in their last ten, minus nine on the differential. Go Pirates, man. Then there's the Cincinnati Reds, 47-50, and 50, eight games back, plus 38 on the differential. What gives? They could also still make the wild card. They're only three games out. Cub, Cubbies, Chicago, 47-51. and 51. Plus, uh, minus five on the differential, seven and three in their last ten. They're managed by Craig Council, who's a smart and even-headed guy. So I think they'll be okay. They, when they, 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 they played really well against the Mariners early in the season. I thought their team looked good. Then, finally, the National League West. The Dodgers are still winning that division. They probably will win it. They're 56 and 41. But again, they're three and seven in their last ten, and their differential is plus 88, which is really good. Arizona has assumed their rightful spot in second place in that division, 49 and 48. (coughs) Big sneeze, sorry folks, Um, we're not going to edit that. 49 and 48, the Diamondbacks are seven games back in the division, one game back in the wild card. San Diego Padres are 50 and 49, 
same thing. Seven game back in the division, one game back in the wild card. Both teams have uh, Arizona's got a plus 17 differential. Padres have a plus 12. That'll be a tight race all the way through. Then there's the Giants, three games under 500, 47 and 50, uh, minus 27 on the differential. They're kind of just barely hanging on, but I don't know. I don't know if they can do it. And then the Colorado Rockies, 34 and 63, minus 169 on your run differential. Uh, they're up there in the running for the worst team in baseball. Uh, they're the worst team in the National League. No, the Marlins have a worse record, but the Rockies have a worse differential. The best record in National League is the Phillies, and they have the best differential. And the Phillies are the best team in baseball, ahead of both Cleveland and Baltimore. Uh, and they have the strongest differential. The worst team in baseball is still the White Sox, 27-71. and 71. That's a .276 winning percentage and they have a minus 177 run differential that is a god-awful ball club so that's where we stand at the break some of my predictions are starting to come back to life okay like minnesota uh arizona (laughs) but cincinnati and miami are still looking like pretty bad picks in the national league and then i kind of had houston and texas making the playoffs ahead of think anyone in the national league east and certainly in the central so i may have to revisit all that but listen it's been a ton of fun bringing you this for the first half of the year uh we look forward to the next 64 episodes feels like there should be more baseball than that i'm I'm starting i'm starting to worry that there's not enough baseball this season um but uh yeah the mariners sort of entered the all-star break Uh, i'll just close on this today you know, it's almost as though, like, they're in, like, a little rowboat with a gigantic hole in the bottom, and their eyes have sort of crusted over with salt, and there's seagulls picking at their hair, and they're, they're just limping towards port, and they're just trying to get in and stay alive. And yet, somehow, they managed to maintain a division lead for nearly two months. And at one point, it was a 10-game division lead, and those were those were heady days. But you know what? They're not that bad of a team. They Their offense stinks. They strike out way too much, but maybe it'll all come together. The last two seasons, they've had an incredible hot streak, 14-game wins. They set a record for wins in the month of August last year that brought them back into the race. They haven't had that yet. And their starting pitching has been, like, historically good. So, you know, if Cal and Julio can lead the way on the offense, and then Rojas and Crawford can hit consistently for average, and Mitch Garver and Luke Rayley can add home runs now and again, then I think we have a chance at making the playoffs. And I will die on that hill. So thank you so much for listening, and we'll, we'll, uh, we'll catch you after the break.